Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we just got the information. We've got a new fusion coming. Is it an Easter special? Um, looking kind of cool. Definitely a Sylvan Watcher. We're going to go through all of the detail in this video and see if it's worth our time. Um, so let's just get straight into it. Um, I will say, Braid always knock it out of the park on the visuals. It's definitely an Easter special. She's got a little Easter bag there and a proper juicy egg on the top of a pole. Why not? Uh, she's also got this kind of like nice crown going on. She's got massive um, gold pennies for earrings and uh, yeah, lots going on. Anyway, before we go to a kit, let's roll an ad. So I'd like to thank Watcher of Realms for sponsoring this video. Watcher of Realms has got some really cool events running right now. If you don't know, I do have a separate YouTube channel for Watcher of Realms. I'll link that down below. There'll also be a link down below in my pinned comment to get involved in the game as well as clicking the QR code. It's really worth giving a try. It's really fun. So what's going on? We have got some crazy events for Easter. First off, we have got Captain Reeve as a limited time summon. Summon 250 summons. You will get him for like guaranteed and he doesn't come back again for maybe another year. He's only been available once before, and he's super strong as a tank in this game. Captain Reeve is also super sweet in terms of his animations. Basically, he's got this AoE ability, which stuns enemies around him, really strong for a tank, and he does damage. So I'm definitely gonna be pulling for him. If you wanna see that video, it will be available later on. At the same time, if you want damage dealers instead of Captain Reeve, then damn, we've got Hex and Zilla 2 in the summoning pool for this weekend. So they're gonna have a 15 times drop rate. A Hex, I pretty much use everywhere in the game. He is a guild boss monster. He's also amazing in the Void Rift and amazing in some of the gear raid dungeons as well. And then I'd say Zilla 2, probably Zilla 2 and Hex are my most used heroes on my account. Like, I'm not even kidding. They're both absolutely nuts. So Zilla 2 is a fighter and uh, she's got this passive skill. If she is blocking a target, you just do 20% more damage, which is nuts as well. She puts burns out. She's useful in a whole bunch of content. So yeah, three really big heroes in summon events this weekend. Now's the time to get involved. Download using my link down below. And thank you, Watcher of Realms, for sponsoring the video. Awesome. Right, let's get into this then. So a legendary force affinity from the Sylvan Watchers. Let's just read what Raid have got to say. I quite like seeing their verb uh, verbiage before I get involved. So they're saying here, it's going to start on the 4th of April. It's going to be a fragment event, which generally are better. They're generally easier to achieve. Um, it says here, Eastrid Dream Song is designed as a versatile support with great buffing and debuffing capabilities, turn meter manipulation and passive healing. You'll find a kit useful in various areas of the game, especially dungeons. And Hydra says here, is there anything else that's, that's crazy? No, okay. And then it's just talking about a kit. So not starting until next week, but uh, it's kind of like in the normal flow of fusions. We've got Slumber Wisp as an A1. Attacks one enemy, 50% chance to sleep an enemy on the A1. I mean, it's not far off of a CP A1, honestly. It's going to book up to 75. If the target's under decreased speed or weaken, placed by this champion, it goes up to 75% chance of placing the sleep. So basically it becomes 100% chance when booked if decreased speed or weaken is out there and she's done that. The only thing with this is I'd say the one area in the game where you want 100% sleep is the sand devil. And this is an impossible interaction because you can't get your decreased speed or weaken out until they're asleep. So that's a bit of a shame really because if you're building her for specific content, I mean, damn. That's the content where you want your sleep. That's literally the content where you want your sleep. I guess maybe in the arena as well, but seems like a bit of a shame to me. Anyway, burst of spring on the A2. Four turn cooldown books to three. And then you can, you can buff up to 100% chance of placing decreased speed and weaken on an AoE. Also gives you a turn meter drop as well, 15%. It's pretty solid. I mean, for Hydra, decreased speed and weaken are two great debuffs. It's an AoE hit. I'd imagine it probably doesn't do that much damage, but we don't know until we see multipliers. But a turn meter drop for normal content with decreased speed added onto it as well is pretty solid. Um, yeah, I think that's a cool skill. That's good. Definitely for wave-based stuff, it's really good. We've then got Blessed Dream Song here for 
the A3. So on a six turn, books to four. Places increased speed and increased attack on all allies for three turns and a turn meter fill. Ooh, that's juicy. That's like Arbiter, but I'm also giving you increased speed. I guess Arbiter does a bit of a better turn meter fill, but still, for like an arena go first mechanic, that's really strong. She gets an extra turn as well. So she literally goes, buff the whole team, drop an increase our turn meter, then we're going against the enemy, dropping their speed and decreasing their turn meter, and then your team get to go. It's actually a phenomenal start to an arena fight. Like, it's an insane start. Like, one of the best in the game for a speed type of team. For, like, traditional teams that are just out there to nuke. Now, I don't suppose they, like, if I'm thinking high-end arena, like plat level stuff, gold live arena, stuff like that, it's probably not that relevant because, you know, stone skin just, just messes it all up. And like, oh, there's, there's a whole bunch of reasons why it's not great. And most of those reasons are called stone skin. <laughs> but for the average player, this is a really, really good setup champion. Like it's, it's a phenomenal champ, honestly, in terms of just general mechanics. It's really good. They've got life bloom here. One turn cooldown. Whenever this champion or an ally has their turn meter increased, which is done here on the A3, heals all allies based on their max HP. The percentage value of the heal is equal to half of the turn meter increased. God, they're making it complex. Uh, it's not that complex, though, I guess. So she's going to give a 7.5% heal, and it's a 7.5% of each of your team's max HP when they have their turn. Uh, not when they have their turn, sorry. When they have their turn meter increased. So if you've got her on the team and then you've got somebody else also doing turn meter fill, that's when you start to get the benefit. I think it's more relevant really for like waves of enemies, that type of stuff. In the arena, honestly, if you're starting to take damage, you're probably going to die. <laughs> like, but I just, I don't know. Maybe it's pretty solid. Like, can you imagine her with an Arbiter? Between them, they're, you're healing for so much. And you've got the Revive. And you've got Turn Meter for days. Feels pretty cool. Feels pretty cool to me. You've also got Speed in the arena by 28%. Definitely feels like she's made to be an arena champion. But this skill is very valuable in all content. The A2 and the A3, pretty much valuable in all content. The A1, I'd say, is fairly irrelevant in all content. Um, I guess in the arena, if you're just looking to, to shut somebody down and you're using someone like a Rotus as your damage dealer, then it can be solid. Um, but all in all, I'm not saying she's bringing something different to what we've already got in the game, because I think she's, she's in the mix of a bunch of champions, honestly. You know, she's kind of got vibes of Lissandra. She's got vibes of Arbiter. But I do think she's a good champion. Like, she'll be a decent one to pick up. Decent legendary. I can't see her getting into many, like, proper end game teams. Albeit, if she's getting anywhere in the end game, it's more focused, I think, around Hydra. Um, and, and Hydra is definitely somewhere where you want to be performing. Definitely any type of wave based content, like high level Doom Tower waves. I think she would be very good. Yeah, all I can say is solid. Like solid through and through. For this faction, for faction war, she's going to be basically god tier. Anyone who's doing that much turn meter manipulation, it's god tier. Anyone who's putting decreased speed on the bosses and stuff, pretty much god tier. Enabling you to just lock down one of the enemies is pretty strong as well. The only trouble with a sleep is you can wake it up. Um, but yeah, all in all, I think pretty good. Let me know what you think down below. Uh, is this one that you're going to pick up over the Easter holidays? And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. I've been Hell80s. I'll see you soon.